on that fateful day, the chief priests tied Jesus up, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, So you say. And the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate questioned him again, Aren't you going to answer? Look how many things they're accusing you of. But Jesus did not answer. At the festival, Pilate used to release for the people a prisoner whom they requested. There was one named Barabbas, who was in prison for murder and rebellion. The crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do for them, as was his custom. Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release the king of the Jews for you? For he knew it was because of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd so that he would release Barabbas to them instead. Pilate asked them again, Then what do you want me to do with the one you call the king of the Jews? Again and again they shouted, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What has he done wrong? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. And after having Jesus flogged, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers that led him away into the palace dressed him up in a purple robe and put on his head a twisted crown of thorns and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They hit him with sticks and spit in his face got down on their knees in mocking homage to him. They stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes back on him and led him out to be crucified. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he wouldn't take it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes among themselves. The inscription above his head read the charge against him. King of the Jews. They crucified also on either side two criminals. Those who passed by hurled insults at him. The one who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Save yourself by coming down from the cross. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross so that we may see and believe. At noon, darkness came over the whole land. And at three, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, See, he is calling for Elijah. Someone ran down and filled a sponge with sour wine and fixed it on a stick and offered it to him to drink. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. 
Jesus let out a loud cry and breathed his last. Good evening, friends and family of Portersville Bible Church. Today is Good Friday, a day that we normally take time to solemnly reflect upon the cross of Christ and the sacrifice that he made for all mankind. And so with that in mind, I have three things that I would like for you to consider about the cross. Number one, Jesus gave his life willingly. Jesus gave his life willingly. No one forced him upon that cross. Yes, he was completely submissive to his father, but that was a choice that he made. In John ten eighteen, Christ said this, No one has taken it away from me, his life, but I lay it down on my own. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I received from my Father. The cross was a plan that Christ, that Jesus and the Father walked into together. It wasn't the actions of a hostile, unfeeling Father upon an innocent Son. Christ was innocent. He is the innocent Son. But it was something they did together. Christ died willingly for our sins. Secondly, the pain of the cross reveals the seriousness of our sin. The pain of the cross reveals the seriousness of our sin. People have often asked, why did Christ have to die? Christ had to die because he was the only sufficient sacrifice, the only effective sacrifice to pay for our sin. But another question that isn't often asked is why did his death have to be so gruesome, so painful? Why did he have to suffer? And the answer is, is that the pain of the cross, the sufferings of the cross, reveal just how seriously our sins offend a holy God. This was no cheap debt that we owed. The story may have been less bloody had Christ just died in his sleep, but it would not have revealed just how offensive our sins are to a righteous and holy God. 3. The cross is the greatest example of meekness the world has ever seen and will ever see. Meekness is often defined as strength under control. Many of you have heard that before. The world doesn't see it as an attribute. They see it as a deterrent. They see it as a weakness. But think on this. There were two criminals sacrificed or killed on either side of Christ. One on his right and one on his left. If it was within their power to come down from their crosses, do you think they would have done so? Absolutely. We would have done the same thing. We would not have for one moment endured the suffering that they did longer than we would have had to. But it wasn't within their power to come down from the cross. Christ could have. At any moment, he could have ended it all. He could have come down and ended his suffering. It was within his power to do so. And so every moment that he continued to hang there was a active choice on his part to stay there for us. That's an amazing thought. That is strength under control. He stood, he, he stayed there because that was God's will for him. He stayed there because in doing so glorified the Father in an amazing and miraculous way. And he stayed there to redeem you and me from our sins. 
three things to consider about the cross. I hope that this Easter weekend is a blessing to you and a beautiful reminder of just what Christ has done for us. God bless.